We should be live. Fantastic. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the River Horse Friday live stream. Uh, I'm Jack. This is Chris. I'm uh, Chris. Indeed. Uh, neither of us are Alessio today. Um, so uh, you've got us to us to contend with. Um, we've sent out a newsletter and lots of exciting stuff uh, at River Horse this week. Um, so without any further ado, let's... No, no more ados. No more ados. Um, let's dive in. Um, the first point that we have is exciting news for anyone who has backed uh, the Hunger Games Kickstarter, as um, Bert has officially, we've pressed the button, we've paid money, <laughs> lots of money, um, and uh, Hunger Games has started manufacturing. So we're hoping that that, it is scheduled even, we're not even hoping, we're expecting, uh, that to be complete on the 30th of June, um, which means that we're definitely on track for uh, delivery uh, in November, or to start in, in November. So um, that's really good for us. <laughs> that or kickstarted it. Um, if you haven't pre-ordered that or kickstarted it, then you can uh, pre-order it on our website at riverholesgames.com. Feel free to jump in on that. The second point in our newsletter is uh, some spinaches. Um, so spinning miniature and uh, we tried last week to um, to give you guys sort of a close-up of the uh, miniatures and uh, it it didn't go great um, it was pretty pretty blurry uh, but we think we've worked out most of the uh, the kinks and uh, hopefully should have something a bit nicer to show you this week if you'd like to yeah so I'll just hit that button there bam um, so I this is... Not, you have to not nudge yeah. the table, because it's actually it's all taped together. <laughs> Hands up! Um, so, this is actual production copies uh, that we've had, uh, sort of, off the first of line, air freighted. Uh, your copies uh, will be basically finished off and put onto a boat. It might be a little bit longer. Uh, but so, this is final quality, this is actually sort of what you get in box um, as it as it comes. And uh, you see our first miniature here is uh, the, um, I was going to say the titular character, but she's not. Mrs. Hunger Games, um, Katniss Everdeen, and, um, who, uh, do a manual spinach. A show. manual spinach, yeah. Let's switch um, to full close cam, shall we? There we go, so I can dive around here. Um, yeah, Katniss, uh, main character of the, uh, of the series, uh, a, uh, a favourite with her, her bow and her sort of, um, in game she is, uh, her main sort of ability is propaganda. She gives people hope and a uh, sort of a useful tool in the uh, resistance's uh, sort of forces. Uh, next we have uh, Plutarch Heavensby. It's, um, lovingly, so all these miniatures are, are lovingly sculpted by um, Luigi Terzi, um, who's an absolutely fantastic uh, Sculptor, he worked on our Highlander game. Um, we're really uh, pleased with uh, with how these have turned out. But, um, you'll notice, um, as opposed to a lot of miniatures you'll see um, nowadays, that are sort of almost cartoonish in their in their proportions, sort of uh, big hands, big heads. Uh, these are actually uh, sculpted to be uh, as lifelike as possible, sort of as in scale with um, with the actors as um, as we could. So uh, basically, these are uh, as the actors. Uh, so this is Finko Dare we've got here. But, um, they are they are really fine miniatures. I was um, I was really taken aback when the the production samples came through, and I thought, oh, um, these are. We've got uh, old Peter. Old Peter. The, uh, the Peter versus Gale. But, uh, which we did, a, we did a poll online when we were uh, sort of adding miniatures into the game, and uh, Peter definitely won against Gale in that, which, uh, which I think favorite. is unfair, because, you know... Call it, call it a fan favourite. Gale's got some pretty pretty good ideas <laughs> uh, regarding war crimes. Uh, and speak of the devil, we have uh, the Hurricane himself, Mr. Gale. <laughs> 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 you're doing a wrestling. Yeah. Weighing in at 
dumb number of pounds. Like I so, don't know. I'm a, I'm weighing English. in at several grams. Only 28 millimeters tall. Gale the Hurricane Gale. I don't know. I forgot um, last name. I think my um, my favourite uh, Naki Dorma as uh, as Cressida. But, um, good good luck to um, all you master painters out there wanting to paint the tattoo on the side of her head, the uh, the roses. Um, I do not envy your task, but uh, I'm sure that someone out there is. Well, your wife probably is going to have the skill to. Uh, There's no brush more than amazing. Enough, like... <laughs> but, um, I think this has to be my favourite character from the movie. Hamish. Yeah. But, uh, I always feel slightly disrespectful picking them up in the head to twist them. Yeah. But, um, it's like, I wouldn't want that. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's what ha that is what is happening. So that's Hamish Abernathy. But, um, then we're nearly through the uh, the resistant units. So these are all, uh, well, good guys might be a strong term as... Um, our next, uh, our next character would uh, stretch the de definition. Alma Coyne, uh, President Coyne. Um, very useful for uh, sort of strategy and using the propaganda uh, effectively. She's quite a good all-rounder, actually, in the game. And, um, yeah, what happens to her afterwards is, uh, is up to you, really. But, uh, that is Alma Coyne. Um... Next we have uh, Boggs, the uh, the best at, at tactical missions. Um, his military knowledge is uh, invaluable to the uh, the resistance efforts. But, uh... yeah. And then uh, the uh, the best intelligence uh, intelligence officer, I guess. Uh, so intelligent person. Uh, BT Latia. Uh, I'm I'm really impressed with how that wheelchair has come out. Yeah, so this actually took a few um, iterations. So uh, he used to be connected to the base. Uh, you can see here um, at the wheel that he's not actually connected to the, to the base there, but that meant that it basically looked like he had a fat tire. It uh, it connected and um, sort of drooped at the bottom. So uh, we actually created, I don't know if you can see, hopefully you can't really, um, sort of a plinth below, uh, below his feet there that uh, connects him to the base, which is pretty hidden from, um, hidden from view. And uh, sort of make sure he's firmly attached, but also those wheels aren't sort of warped. Yeah, I just think it's really impressive that the, the spokes on the wheel are so fine and yet there's no warping. Um, um, I've definitely backed a bunch of Kickstarters in the past where things that fun come and they're kind of like a bit they've got a bit dally yeah the um the bow the crossbow and the um and the wheels really came out well so those are the good guys um <laughs> or the resistance depends which side you're on really uh next we have uh the the baddies in their perfect white um these don't show quite as well on the camera but hopefully they uh they come through all right yeah a bit, a bit too white <laughs> <laughs> but um they look really good in person. Um, the sort of the detail is is just as deep and just as um, uh, good as the greys. But uh, so we have uh, President Snow here, the big bad himself. Um, so the uh, the capital has less sort of heroes on its side, but each of them has more resources, and so is sort of uh, better able to um, uh, to do their missions. That kind of means the capital, although they have less heroes, they can sort of. Um, choose what missions and operations they want to succeed a bit more than the uh, the resistance. They also start with all their heroes, whereas the resistance gain theirs sort of throughout the game. Uh, next we have Hapageria, uh, sort of Snow's uh, right-hand woman. And, uh, looking very smart as she, uh, as she does in the movie. And then finally, the man who makes me uh, distressed to uh, call myself Jack Caesar, uh, Caesar Fuckerman, <laughs> um, the uh, talk show host, sort of uh, slimy presenter. Uh, that might be a bit mean, but um, 
<laughs> he's not real. He's not real. He hopefully isn't offended. He's only um, 28 mil tall and made of plastic. That could probably take him. But, um, Caesar Flickman. Uh, and those are the uh, the miniatures to come in uh, in the Hunger Games Mockingjay. Um, there's also uh, hovercraft and 15 mil uh, soldiers and resistance units, uh, which you can uh, find our signatures of if you go through the uh, Kickstarter updates, and I'm sure those will be shared on the newsletter and Facebook as well. Yeah, the um, signatures are actually in this week's newsletter, aren't they? That's written on Yeah, so the, on uh, the, the cat misses, um, and then I think you can, uh, there's links to, to the rest of the, um, the miniatures. <laughs> Spinners. Yeah. Make myself laugh. Uh, <laughs> what, what's next on our ring order? Uh, next, we uh, dive away from Hunger Games, and um, uh, before I go, uh, into that actually if you have any questions regarding um hunger games or anything else we do feel free to uh um throw those into the chat and we will uh, we will grab them and uh try and answer them throughout the uh the show so we have a question ah, I fantastic can, i can tell because it has a question mark after it okay useful x-men question mark this went under my radar <laughs> uh my guess would be bt latia i see but, uh, he's looking at it. Uh, <laughs> Professor X. But, um, which I'm not sure if that's profiling. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I can, uh, I think you'd make a pretty good Professor X, to be honest. <laughs> Next question. Hunger Games, question mark. I did not follow. <laughs> ah, yeah, so, um, this is all, um, for, uh, Hunger Games, Mocking Jet, the, uh, strategy board game that is coming out, uh, to a store near you in November. Uh, if you're interested, you can check it out on our website, and uh, there's more information there, and uh, you can also reorder it. Uh, yeah, if you want to get the you know, first wave off the truck. And uh, dive into that, but um, yeah, and there's tons of videos online, you can find the Kickstarter where we go through sort of all the miniatures and all the, um, uh, the how to play, and sort of how it, how it runs. Uh, really excited about that coming out. Um, it's always nice to see sort of something you've been working on for, for ages actually like becoming a real thing you can touch um not just bits of cards you've written on with terrible handwriting um but next we have uh tales of equestria on drive through rpg yeah. so uh you can find all of our tales of equestria um uh books on drive through rpg uh these are available as uh, pdfs um you can get them from our website as physical copies or from drive through rpg as pdfs we're also doing a bundle of uh, every uh, um, Tales of Equestria product uh, we've done, uh, apart from the starter set, which uh, is a uh, physical sort of version only. Uh, so all the PDFs for ooh, 89 um, Really should have written that down. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's eighty nine ninety nine. Um, so that is like literally everything. Um, you can sort of start and finish your collection in, in one click. Um, really useful for people who sort of um, travel with the collection. I find that like when you're going to a, a game and you're like, oh, you know, I want to use this thing and that thing and, you know, one thing out of every book and you end up having this massive pile of stuff you have to take with you. So PDF copies obviously uh, alleviate that uh, that little bit as well as being useful for people um, uh, who like to use search functions and, um, and who like using computers more than... Uh, <laughs> Uh, more than uh, physical copies. Speaking of uh, Tales of Equestria, we have our uh, latest creature feature. Ah, I push this button here. Ooh. Um, which this week is the bookworm. The bookworm originally appeared in Festival of Lights, uh, which is uh, an adventure by Zach Barrow, where you uh, head deep into the uh, into Umberfall. And, Nothing uh, happened when I pressed that button. Oh, okay, there. probably just press the uh, button. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where you adventure deep into Umberfall, and uh, basically, well, he's not a he's not a goodie, but um, well, he's actually a he's a controlled sort of golem-like uh, creature made out of books and scrolls. Uh, he also features in Judge Not by the Cover, which is one year old today. So happy birthday, uh, Judge Not by the Cover! Just to talk a little bit about, like, I absolutely love the artwork for this monster. I, I think. 
personally, I would put this monster in any role playing game I was playing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was. Who drew this one? Uh, so this was Anka Sen. I thought um, it was. Yeah, I've been trying to get a um, interview with her for our interview the the artist thing um, for Tales of Equestria. But yeah, I just think it's a really characterful kind of. I like the idea of like a, a pile of scrolls, kind of all that magic, and it, mm. it finds some kind of form where it it just becomes a friendly little antler of dragon. Yeah. Well, the um, the first copy of it. Um... So it went through a couple of iterations where it was sort of this big bulky thing made out of sort of stacks of books and it looked quite sort of cartoonish, which I realise it's MLP. Yeah. Uh, it's going to look cartoonish. But um, it looked cumbersome and uh, sort of non-threatening. Uh, and as this is quite a big, big, nasty, you know, boss, uh, he's got some fairly uh, fairly horrid stats on him, if you know your, your Tales of Equestria. So thick high means that it's really pretty difficult to hurt him. Uh, and fire breath means uh, it's not hard for him to hurt you, and um, so and because he's sort of he doesn't have any um, he's unliving he's this sort of construct then uh, sort of uh, destroying him is uh, is okay, um, but yeah so we wanted something threatening and um, and uh, yeah no she took a second part of it and I'm really glad she did because it uh, it came out really nicely and. Um, uh, yep, yeah, Alessio Cavatori confirms that the PDF bundle is eighty nine dollars, so ninety nine uh, cents less than uh, less than I thought. Um, so yeah, that's the uh, that's the book one. Um, who I think might be my favourite art um, of any of our creatures, which I realise I'm saying wow. to one of the artists. <laughs> Better than the Pine Martin. Oh, the Pine Martin is good. If you haven't checked out the other creature features, they're um, in our newsletter and on our website as well. Uh, we do one every week. Uh, check them out. They're amazing. Um, we cover some of the um, creatures from the show uh, sort of that we didn't cover in the battery. We cover some of the, um, the creatures out of books uh, that sort of aren't in the battery mostly. Um, and we have some more coming up. Uh, we also have some quite interesting ones, uh, including new playable races. So keep your eye out and um, and check it out. Uh, so with uh, our games, your content is the next uh, thing in the newsletter. Uh, so this is your hand dragon, Chris, and I'm yeah. struggling with it. I'll be honest. That's fair. Uh, <laughs> it's mostly glyphs. D and D miniatures. D and E miniatures so, um, have done a Terminator Genesis unboxing complete with spinaches. So the Terminator Genesis game that I think we did a feature on a couple of weeks ago, um, also in our newsletter. Um, I was gonna I was gonna point to it because it's usually there. Yeah. Um, but something strange has happened to our display today. Um, we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So D and E miniatures have done an unboxing of the Terminator game. Um, I don't think they've done one yet of the expansion. Um, but, yeah, we made one of the expansions. So I think you've got <laughs> an unboxing there of the expansion and the not expansion. So go check them out, support them, because it's pretty cool <laughs> that the world's full of people making videos yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah, it's always really nice to see uh, people just out of love of stuff, like creating content. Um, and if you have your own content uh, that's uh, related to uh, real horse games then, um, or any of our, our products or our licenses, then uh, yeah, chuck it our way and we, you might feature in uh, in the newsletter. How, how would someone chuck it our way? Uh, you can contact us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, email at info, uh, info at riverhorse.eu. Um, you can also contact us through our website at riverhorsegames.com. Uh, and that should be enough ways. Or just... <laughs> Ignore everything I've just said and type River Horse Games into Google and it will work it out. Um, duh, duh, duh. Uh, we are live, reminder. Yeah, so basically remind people that we do this at 5 o'clock oh, on yeah. Fridays. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, for the latest in, um, in River Horse news, subscribe to our newsletter, which can be done through our website. Uh, we also go through our newsletter in this segment here, as well as little extra stuff like the spinaches that you just saw. Um, so, yeah, you can find us on... Uh, did I get the email address right? Uh, you did. You nailed yes. it. In one. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you uh, throw something um, 
in that, talking about uh, info at horse, or if you have your, sorry, not info at horse, um, related content, or if you have your own creature ideas, or um, a little one who has a uh, creature um, to share for the creature feature, we're always interested um, in creating uh, sort of creatures. We've yeah, some cool stuff. The creature there. feature is like, is open to, to artists and everyone of, of all varying levels of, of, of talent. Like, we we will happily, <laughs> like, share, like, artwork of all ages. Oh, yeah, and I completely forgot to say. Uh, basically, if you send in a, a creature, all we need is a picture of the creature of any quality and um, a description of, of the creature, sort of name. You don't need to do stats, but if you want to, feel free. Um, and if we use it, we will uh, send you a free star set uh, for Tales of Equestria. So if you're not into um, Tales of Equestria yet, that's a great way to enter. Uh, but if you are, you can uh, always share that with a friend and get them into it to uh, make your party bigger. Um, we have some uh, products that are on pre-order at the moment, if you're interested in uh, being the first to get those. Uh, the Hunger Games, as uh, you saw the, uh, the miniatures, there's also way more information on those. Those are available on uh, pre-order. Ogres and Oubliettes, which um, we're hoping to get some cool stuff to show you fairly soon. Um, that is our standee set for Tales of Equestria. So um, basically if you want to use miniatures in your game, if you're sort of that kind of person, um, wanting to sort of, uh, makes it easier to sort of know where everyone is and things like that. Uh, especially in sort of action-packed scenes, and Oglers and Oglers, Ogres and Oubliettes <laughs> um, is uh, the perfect. Uh, that should definitely be our sneak peek uh, one. Ogle, <laughs> Ogle the Oubliette. Um, then uh, yeah, oh, I've completely lost my train of thought. Uh, check it out. Standees, uh, little miniatures, little cardboard miniatures. Yeah, they're rad with bases and stuff, so you can kind of lay out. You know, you can say, oh well, there's five diamond dogs over here and a hydra over here and you can kind of personally I, I love to play RPGs with miniatures or standees because I, I find it quite difficult to keep track of where things are because I have a very short attention span. <laughs> um, and the third thing is the Labyrinth Adventure yes. Game. Um, so the Labyrinth Adventure Game well do you want to it's available for pre-order um, we yeah I mean, that, that's pretty much it. It's a, it's a adventure. It's a rule system for beginners. It's an adventure for people of all ages and all like levels of uh, role play sort of role experience. Play experience. It's got a, a, a best tree and a toolkit and everything that you need to create your own adventures, as well as having the two hundred page adventure that um, Ben Milton wrote for us, like which is absolutely ace. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, like, it's a riot. I feel very privileged to have been able to read it before everybody else. And finally, um, you will see behind us uh, something quite exciting. I think there's, um, probably halfway, there's a point halfway down this chat log where Alessio realises <laughs> that we may have altered the set. Um, so, as you can see, we've had some um, production samples of Pacific Rim. Um, and we're hoping to get you some uh, exciting content uh, next week, so make sure you tune in. This will be the first place that um, that news will be shared, so check it out. And, well, technically uh, the newsletter will be... Technically the newsletter is, what, 15 minutes before yeah, this? Yeah, so the newsletter goes out 15 minutes before this, and then there's this. So, so subscribe to the newsletter, read through it, and then tell us the information we get wrong on, on the camera. Yeah. Um, oh! I think that's uh, that's everything from us. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for listening, watching, uh, whatever it is you do with live streams. And uh, oh, the battery is running low, so yeah. good timing on <laughs> uh, all around. Um, thank you very much, everybody, and we'll see you next Friday. <laughs>